Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. And since the memory of my original DIY Matter Zero Code uh, video is fresh, I thought I'm going to just, um, you know, dive into this very simple project before I start tackling some of the more complicated projects. And this basically comes from the fact that there, there is a WS2812, so basically a NeoPixel support in this uh, Zero Code environment. and. That is a very easy project to, to put together. As you can see, it's a microcontroller, three wires, and then, well, I happen to have this NeoPixel ring, so it's just, uh, the LEDs are arranged in a ring, but you can use a strip as well. And it works as a Matter-compatible device, so I can control it from my Google Home, I can set it to, oh, let me change. I can change the, uh, uh, the colors, uh, sorry, the brightness, so you can see I can go full brightness, I can dial it all the way back. And I mean, obviously the, the camera does auto of uh, balance, so you won't be able to see such a dramatic difference, but uh, obviously there is. It's a small ring, it's only 24 pixels, and I can change the colors. And now I can change it to blue, and it changes to blue, as you can see, and then, you know, green. Green is not very strong. It is definitely green, but I think the white balance makes it white. And I can make it to orange as well. And that's it. I mean, it's a color, um, you know, light. It is, in functionality, it is almost like an, you know, regular RGB light. Uh, but uh, it uses a NeoPixel ring. And the NeoPixel, it just makes it easy because uh, it is controlled by this data wire. So you don't need any, you know, driving circuitry to drive the LEDs. So, you know, parts count and uh, is very low. And as I said, it's very easy to do. But also, I think the usefulness of this is also very limited because um, uh, while you are using a fairly expensive NeoPixel ring where all of the LEDs are addressable and it should, you know, it is capable of producing various, you know, animations, color animations, blinking and all sorts of stuff. But none of them is actually supported by Matter or even, you know, the the application. Well, definitely not Google Home because I haven't seen such functionality anywhere. But I'm guessing it's probably the same with Alexa and Apple Home as well. But I think it would be quite useful for some sort of, you know, special notification lights. Um, so maybe you can, um, you know, hide this uh, ring under like a glass vase or something that you can use for decoration. And you can create some automations uh, like if the, if the weather is going to be rainy, then, you know, turn this on at blue. So you know that you have to take an umbrella before you leave home or, uh, yeah, some sort of notification, maybe somebody rings the door, then this uh, comes on, so you can have it beside the TV or, you know, somewhere where you study or you listen music, so you have a sort of visual feedback that something is happening around your house and you need to pay attention to. I think there is one more issue with this particular implementation in, the, in Matter, um, that, you know, when you want to change colors, you have these two options, uh, either, uh, you know, specify the color or you can do temperature, color temperature. But what I notice that if I try to pick anything in the color temperature, then the ring doesn't respond. But I think it should be possible to, uh, you know, to mix any of these color temperatures uh, with this ring. So I'm not really sure why this hasn't been implemented. I mean, you can pretty much like, you know, com um, implement sort of like this axis here uh, using the temperature, but uh, for some reason they didn't do that. So if you want to use this, make sure that you always select the color and not the color temperature. And as I said, to make a project like this, it's very easy. You just need, I mean, this is a ring, but you can buy like a strip of uh, NeoPixel LEDs. Uh, oops. <laughs> I think because I'm moving the wires around, it's, uh, uh, I have connectivity issues and some of the LEDs went off. Uh, and it's easy to put together. So you can just, uh, you know, spend rest of the time thinking about how you're going to place it. As I said, you know, make it as part of a decoration or something. If you are completely new to this uh, concept, I have a separate video where I talk about all these uh, zero code platform where you can build matter compatible projects without doing any coding. And this is what I'm going to do now. But in this video, I'm going to just fly through the, uh, um, the, the basics because I've already covered in the previous video. So I'm just going to focus on this particular project. 
So if you're completely new to this, I recommend that you watch the first video where you get a good overview of this, you know, the entire system, how it works. And I talk about, you know, deployment and how you test it. And here I'm just going to skip all these parts because it's, it's going to be the same. And before I show you the code, I just want to show you how easy it is to put this together. Uh, as I said in the previous video, I'm using this uh, ESP32C3 Super Mini. Super Mini. Yeah. And the NeoPixel ring basically, or NeoPixel strip basically needs three wires. One is uh, five volts and ground. And you can see that I got five volts and ground for the first two pins. Obviously five volts is red and the ground is black. So that's basically the first and the second uh, pin from the left. And uh, I just picked a D10 for the, for the data pin, which is the third one from up here on the right. If you look at the board this way. And the reason it turned off because I'm switching the wires and it loses connection. So then I just need to change either the color or the brightness and it refreshes the, uh, the, the ring. And this particular ring, so that has 24 pixels. And if I turn it all the way up and if I select a white color like this, then it draws around 4 watts. So that's a little bit more than one amp, sorry, a little bit less than one amp. So I think you can go probably up to like 50 pixels and still drive the, uh, the strip from a USB, the USB-C power supply. And then maybe just like a beefy two amp USB power brick. And if you want to do anything more, then definitely you would need a separate five volt power supply. And then basically just supply the ring, well, the NeoPixels with five volts, and then use the same five volts to drive the, uh, the ESP. And then you can just forget about the USB cable. But to be honest, I don't think that this project is really suitable for long, uh, long strips because uh, the NeoPixel lights, are definitely more expensive than the regular RGBs because they have this additional functionality of controlling it each pixel individually, which we can't really use this project. So if you want a really long light, I suggest that you pay the extra money for a proper LED strip controller, not this, you know, DIY one, and just buy a, you know, cheaper strip because uh, if there is any issue with the strip, it would be easier and cheaper to replace. Okay, and now let's look at the project. So let me show you how I created from the beginning. So uh, I logged in with my account to the zero code expressive.com and I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to call this NeoPixel video. Uh, this is not the first time I'm recording this. Yeah, and from the projects, we are going to scroll down because there is one here which is called LED strip and the driver is WES2812. So select this. And then we select the module. As I said, I'm using the C3 and I'm using this dev kit. It doesn't have a separate one for the super mini, but that's going to be good enough for us. And in the product configuration, the only thing we have is basically we just have the ESP and then we have the LED. I mean, it's a NeoPixel light, but you know, that's the whole thing. And so we can only configure two things. What, which pin we are going to use. And as I said, I just picked GPIO 10. It has a few other GPIOs, but I wanted GPIO 10. And then you specify the number of LEDs in your strip. So in my ring light, I have 24. You can buy bigger, smaller ring light or just a piece of strip. And you can use as many pixels as I want. Again, keeping in mind with power supply limitations, uh, what I mentioned before. And that's it. This is all we need to do. So now you can proceed and then you can just, uh, you know, use the, this e, uh, evaluate the ESP, uh, sorry, use the ESP launchpad to burn this pre, uh, pre, well, not pre-configured, but this configured firmware to the ESP like I did. And that's it. It's going to give you the QR code. So then you can link it to your Google, Alexa or Apple system and it will be working. So that's it. That's all it takes to put this small project together. And the final thing I wanted to mention, if I come out of this and I go to automations and I create a new household automation, what it's called here in Google, is that on the action side, adjust home device. And I need to find this guy, NeoPixel ring. So you have all the options to, you know, control brightness and turn it on and off, obviously. Uh, and change the color. 
so you can use this to you know select any of these colors um i okay so i i think the first few are uh, the color temperatures so probably don't use those but use any of the sort of like the real colors uh for the same reason that i mentioned before but as you can see you have all the you know the oranges the reds the purples the blues and the uh and the greens to uh, to choose from and as i said you don't have the special you know really funky effects that you get in wled but you get a sleep and awake um, functionality so this is the you know the gradual brightening and the gradual fading effect that you can use to you know go to bed or wake up to and you can configure how long the effect should be and you can also stop the light effect so that's it it's not an awful lot of functionality uh, definitely it's <laughs> way less than you get with the WLED but that was the reason that I said that it's a it's a limited project but sort of like notification light and you know something small easy that you can you know build together put together uh, with you know fairly uh, cost effectively I think this is a great project if you are interested in any of these I'm going to leave links uh, AliExpress links to this uh, C3 where I purchased this from, and also the link to the Expressive uh, Zero code environment. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.